Hello viewers, welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video, I will be talking about the mob justice as brought out in Major Mwangi's story, an incident in the park from the anthology, A Silent Song and other stories. For us to understand the concept of mob justice, which is quite familiar in most African countries, we need to first know and get a background information about the character who experiences such justice in the story. And uh, this will take us straight to the fruit seller. Just as we had mentioned in the previous video that the city park is neglected and under one of the gnarled trees a shaggy thin man sits under a shrub he is scratching numbers and letters on his black dry skin with a used match by his side are two oversized fruit baskets he has been selling from all morning and which he would resume hawking after the lunch break and during this lunch break is when the armies of ministerial office workers gushing through from their offices have passed through the park and they have gone to the city to get their lunch he scratches his head with a match stick and tries to balance the morning sails. He mumbles to himself, curses, and rolling up his trouser legs, continues writing on his thigh. Finally, he flings the stick away and wetting his palm with saliva, violently erases what he has been scribbling. Then he falls unceremoniously on his back and covers his rough bearded face with two bony hands. The picture cut of the fruit seller is that of someone who is disparate, someone who is despondent, and someone whose business is not going according to plan. He is a hand-to-mouth guy of which even the voyage from the hand to mouth is occasioned with the tremendous difficulties. There is this point that when uh, the office workers now get to pass through the park, going back to their offices after lunch, the man decides to heave his back baskets, one on the left shoulder, the other on the right shoulder, hoping that this time is now going to earn something. And that is when the city constables, the two city constables at the park, catch up with him and demand for a license. It is apparent to everyone who cares to see that he does not have the license in as much as he tries to fumble through his pockets to get the license. Then, true to our inkling, at the end of the day, he fails to find the license and offers the five shillings that he has sold to the policeman. And that is sort of the bribery that helps most people in African cities evade the harsh pangs of justice, or should we call it injustice? When he fails to convince the policeman to take the five shillings, he now offers ten, a basket of fruits, another basket of fruits, and he pleads with them that he has a wife, 
he has children, and that there was a time he had appeared before the judge, who he calls a tyrant. Of course, retracting very fast after that. So he tries the emotional appeal with the policeman, and this still does not work. He now takes one last uh, way of saving himself, and he breaks away from uh, the constable. The constable shoots after him, and then he has made a tremendous distance between himself and uh, the constable, and that is about a hundred yards. And luckily for him, there is one passerby who, heeding to the call by the constable, nabs him. He hits out, breaking free once more. Then another man lunges for him. Again, he lashes on savagely, disparate, and tries to run. He stumbles, falling into the ditch by the side of the highway. Now the onlookers, who are not even aware of uh, what must have ensued between the men and uh, the policemen, come by and start hurling stones at him. He cries out, pleading for mercy. In their thirst for blood, no one gets to listen. By the time the constable runs up, the fruit peddler lies like a broken, twisted rag doll at the bottom of the ditch. A chunk of rock has drawn thick red blood over this parsley, bearded face. Then the policemen, uh, the, the constables, then retreat conveniently when they find no one to put the blame on. Viewers, allow me to thank all of you for the support that you've given uh, to us in this channel. Allow me to also ask those who are visiting us for the first time to kindly take a second or two, hit onto that subscribe button so that anytime we produce a video like this, YouTube will notify you. So the episode that we have just highlighted is that of mob justice and how the mob justice normally takes, makes use of the group psychology. You know the onlooker, so the man who tries to nab uh, the fruit seller, who tries to lie after him, who stones him to death, are not even aware of the kind of crime that he must have been committed when the city constables were running after him. And uh, sadly, it is quite interesting that this is what happens in most cities where people take laws in their own hands. And this has, is what has been brought out by Major Mwangi in his story, An Incident in the Park. Until next time, thank you.